Nation. Yes, yes, we are back. I got my brother, Stuart Swagger, in the building. What's up, King? Me? Motherfucker, you. You call me King? <laughs> hey man, that, that's that's my that's my term of endearment. Oh, okay. All right, like cuz, Wody, homie. Yeah, 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 yeah. All, all that shit. Blood cuz. I like that. That's new. That's new. Hey I'm, man. I'm gonna start using that. I approach all my guys with King, man, because we're all royalty, brother. You you are you are Raider royalty as well. So Well, you know what? Like I told you, I wanted to get on here and I wanted to address the nation and just let everybody know like how important it is for me to be back and yes. like the love and like being back in the organization and what Mark is doing and what the staff is doing. And, and like, it's unbelievable, man. Like it, it's, it's, it's life changing. And man, I haven't, I have, I've had a smile on my face since like this whole thing started because it's, it's like a whirlwind. Yeah. I mean, really, because again, dude, for 15, 16 years, like, I, I didn't I didn't rock any of this stuff like nothing dude like I didn't rep anything because again my whole thing was I didn't do what I thought I should do out there but like I still put my heart and soul into it and I bled and sweated for bled and sweated I <laughs> blood sweat and tears for the silver and black and like to get the love back and the appreciation because man we do put a lot of work in and like my bad. I'm sharing the video everywhere, so just just keep, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. So like, like I know, like it wasn't the best years, but dude, like everyone, even even the offensive guys during those years, man, they they tried their hardest too, man. So like, I know it wasn't the best times, but being able to come back and watch a Raiders game, dude, that the fir- that was the first Raiders game I watched. Literally, I swear to God, since probably watching film on San Diego in Week 16 in 2007, dude. To be honest with you, Damn. that was honestly the first Raiders game that I sat and watched and actually, like, watched the game as not only a fan, but also as um, a voice for the fans to kind of, you know, talk in, you know, if they had questions about plays and this and that. So, I don't take it lightly, Raider Nation. I'm excited as hell to come back for the home opener, man. It's going to get crazy. And... uh the love is much appreciated, man, for real. Hey, hey God, can I say something real quick? I am very blessed, man, and, and humble to be able to be a part of the process. Um, I, I see the pro- I see the difference in you from day one. So uh Well, you started it. I mean, to be honest with you, I give you a lot of credit, man. I mean, nah, nah, look, man. If you, it, wasn't, it wasn't for me talking about yo, dude, I like your gear. Like <laughs> bro, I, I look, I provided the platform, man, and you came on and, and you did what you do. And, and at the end of the day, man, the nation. Um, we're all, we got your back brother and, and trust me, man, we're excited to see you back within the nation wearing all your, wearing all your gear. Man, this shit is lit, bro. It's lit, bro. It's lit. Hey, like, and I'm, we're hey, doing, you like the, you like the Reebok, the I'm old fucking school, mad, like, bro. You know, you know, I get jealous of that shit, man. I'm wearing, dude, I'm wearing that old five travel gear. Like, yeah, I told you, you looking gear. like, you looking like Al Davis in his prime, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. For real. Hey, real quick, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. I appreciate you guys. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. Meaning. Wipe them feet, subscribe, and um, real real quick, Chili Man says, "Graphic, what's up, brother? What's up, Stool? What's up, Raider fam? I just beat COVID. I'm feeling better. Wifey's recovering, but we're good. Love y'all. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for the update, my brother. I'm very happy for you. Thank God, man. Uh, shout out to you and your Raider Red brother. It's good to know, man. Great to know. Thank shout you. Out to everybody in the chat, man. Nizer, uh, Longy, Raider Squid. We got Swin Raider, B Marquez." Uh, ben Bad, appreciate you, brother. He says, great interview with JP. Uh, appreciate you, brother. For those who don't know, I did an interview earlier for another page, our brother JP. Um, he has a great podcast. I appreciate that, Ben Bad. And once again, I appreciate the donation, King. Appreciate well, you. Well, and you know what we talked about? It's not going to be story time tonight. I want to make sure, like, the fans. Yes. Or the nation, not fans, the nation, family, ask whatever questions, and we're going to try to get through as many as we can. It's about you guys tonight because That's it. That's we get it. out here and we, we get caught up in stories yep. and we don't get a chance to really listen to what you guys want to yep. talk about or whatever. So all about I, y'all. This is I'm a fan show book. tonight. It's all about y'all tonight. Leave your questions, whatever questions you have for Stu, put them in. We're going to bring them up 
And Stu is going to be as real as it fucking gets. You already know how it go over here. So put them questions in and let's get rocking. Raider Squid says, I'm just here for the normal fuckery. You know that's going to happen, King. <laughs> Let me turn that light off real quick, get my lighting better. There we go. There we go. Well, um, I just want to make sure that, you know, I, I got these two dummy, these, my, two, my two dogs with me tonight. So if you hey, hear me yelling and you hear me yelling, it's, the, it's these guys. So this is Bo and Maggie, my two little French bulldogs. Where my dogs at? They're straight assholes. They're dickheads. <laughs> so they're going to be running all over the place. So if you hear me yelling, I'm, I'm cussing at these guys. So It's all good. Yeah. Hey, Bass, I believe um, Stu already answered this on the live. It's Coop, right? Your favorite, your favorite teammate. I would say, yeah, Gerard Cooper, number 40. I mean, I probably had my closest relationship with him. Like, me and him kind of were on the same level as far as how we approach the game, our attitudes. Like, to be honest with you, like, one thing I learned from him, like, how I talk to fans and how I interact with fans, a lot of that I learned from Cooper. Because, like, he was always the dude, like, taking his shirt off in the stands, like, saying hi to everybody like yeah. didn't give a fuck about like status or I mean he played in the Super Bowl he was a Pro Bowl special teams player and yeah. um he just always was just like a down to earth like cool ass dude so I learned kind of that humbleness from actually Gerard so and I know you guys kicked it off the field a lot as well and that's oh, where yeah. the fu- that's where the fuckery really happened but yeah but <laughs> but yeah I, I know I knew that that was cool real quick Stu why Number 30. Shout out to that boy, Tsunami, man. Great question. <laughs> so, so my, my actual number, I, I don't know if you can see it back, but that's my high school jersey, the the, the, the blue one, and then the Purdue jersey there. Number I'm nine. number nine. That was my number. And I got number nine being from Michigan. Um, I was more of a basketball player. So growing up as a white dude, I always uh, – my favorite player was Dan Marley. And Dan Marley's from Traverse City, Michigan. Yep. He's from Traverse City, Michigan. I was from Saginaw, Michigan. He went to Central Michigan, and then he was out there for the Phoenix Suns, like, doing his thing. So I always rocked nine because of that. And then when I came out to Oakland, um, they are like, Stu, what, what, what number do you want to get? And I was like, you know, I want to incorporate – because as a DB, you can't wear nine. You can only wear 20 through 49. Yeah. So I was like, give me 39 and have that nine. And they're like, dude, that's a garbage-ass number. Like, we're going to put you up in 30. And you know what's funny, though, is my first football jersey was number th- – I got to show it now. My first football jersey and my basketball jersey was 30, and I didn't even realize it, so it was just kind of like – kind of almost like fate. So Yeah. You're about to go grab that shit. Oh, gee. Appreciate you with that, brother. Said, love you, Stu, for all you do. You opened my eyes about Coach Shell. Love my brother Graphic for what he does for the nation. I appreciate you, OG. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. We're going to get a lot of questions in tonight, y'all. A lot of questions. If you guys have questions, get them in. I'm going to try and bring up as many as possible. Um, it's kind of difficult sometimes talking and answering, every, trying to get as much as I can up, but I will definitely get as many questions as I can possible. Um, make sure y'all wipe them feet. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. Also, man, if y'all can, do me this favor. This this is going to be a new favor of mine. Tweet this out. Put it on Facebook. um, Put it somewhere on some social network. We're getting closer and closer to 10K. The more the the word. Sorry sorry that took so long, but this is my first football game. And still didn't give a fuck about what I was talking about. But that being said. I said about 10,000 followers or something you said, right? There you go. There you go. It's all good. Go ahead, bro. No, so this is my first football jersey, and it was just like random. And then this was my this is my my high school basketball jersey. So like I wouldn't even think about it. Like thirty, and actually thirty is a dope ass number. Like thirty. You were Steph, you were Steph Curry before Steph Curry. That's right. You're right. Talk he is shit. thirty. That's right. Yeah. And you were in the, and you were in the baby form too. Talk that shit. Well, you know, I mean, he is Steph <laughs> Curry. Like I mean, he's he's the NBA. I, yeah. M- NBA MVP, a goat. like <laughs> I mean, I can't really. And, and he's and he's on all the subway commercials, and I love subway. So 
Hey, Stu, quick, quick question from Jonathan, man. Shout out to my brother, Jonathan. Would you consider being a coach? Uh, you know what? I tried. I actually tried. I um, So in 2016, after I kind of sold off my businesses and stuff, um, I, I looked at every NFL roster, and I went through the coaching staff to see, like, who I played with or who I played against or who were former coaches. And I went through every roster and got all their contact information and, and threw it out there and do like, like nothing back, man. Like yeah. nothing. And well, guess what? Right now, this, all this new light, we, we got to get you there, bro. Well, you know what though? It's coaching is a tough job, man. Those, those guys, they sacrifice a lot, dude. Like they, they're, the time they put in. Like, I wish that the NFL would be like, listen, coaches have to leave the offices by nine o'clock. Like, you have to go home because I remember, like Rob Ryan and Wink Martindale, dude. They, 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 they would have a blow up mattress and they're watching film till yeah. like five a.m. and, yeah, yep. because they just wanted to win so bad. But like, you're sacrificing time with your wife and your kids and. You know, like you don't want to be the first coach out of the facility. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like every coach yeah. is kind of like, well, yeah, wait, I gotta stay because he's staying, and I gotta. But, and yeah, dude, it's it's. I never thought of it like that. That's crazy, bro. It's tough, dude. I'm telling you, man. And like, here's the deal: you could you could call the perfect play against the offense that you knew was gonna happen, and the whole play was set up for the safety to come through the B-gap unblocked and sack the quarterback, right? And that shit all works out, but he misses a tackle, and it's like... Touchdown! Yeah, <laughs> like, I caught, like, man, like, dude, we drew that shit up, and it worked out perfect, but the player at the point of attack didn't make the play, so it's like, dude, that's... Yeah, it, it's it's rough, man. It, it, it's honestly, it's a, it's a... Being a coach in college... And, and an NFL band, I, I don't envy those guys, man. Yeah, Trust me. They, they, if you look at the amount of hours they put in and, and divide that by what they make, yeah, I bet you they're making $10 an hour, bro. Like, it's they work, man. They freaking work, dude. Unless you grew it with a $100, $100 million uh, guaranteed contract. But I, I, I feel you, brother. Hey, real quick, let me uh, this, shout out to our guy, Mike Neiser, man. This is our boy right here. Uh, are you following this year's team at all, Stu? Appreciate you doing this with us. Thank you. Shout out to our brother, Mike Neiser, right there, man. Um, appreciate you on a donation. Um, I can answer this, Stu, if you want. Um, right now, you know, yeah. Stu is just getting back acclimated to just to, to the NFL today. Um, but, yes, that's why we're going to start watching games together, getting him more active. Um, he, he has been looking more a little bit more over our roster. He can name a few players now. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, well, like I told you, we watched the whole game or yeah, pretty much yeah. the whole game, the yeah, last and, the last preseason game. Which, to be honest with you, the preseason doesn't mean anything, guys. It yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't you want to. I mean, it, it does create some buzz and stuff, but mm -hmm. it has no implication on how we're gonna do during the regular season, man. But you did call me excited about Clee Furl. Um, oh yeah, excited about DC. Yep. Um, excited about Darren Waller. We talked yep. about Josh Jacobs behind the scenes, so. Um, he's getting very familiar with our team right now. Uh, but you already know how this goes. Once a Raider, always a Raider. Um, Stu, you see Stu decked out right now, man. It is what it is. You already know. Uh, we got some great questions in here, man. Let me pull up a few more. Um, uh, hey, one quick Warren Sapp story. You have a you have a you have a Warren Sapp story? <laughs> um I would say probably and the funny thing is, is like Warren Sapp. He's, I mean, he's, he's like, you have, you have NFL players and then you have like the, the elite of the elite, like yeah. the Charles Woodson's, the Randy Mosses, the Warren Sapps, the Calvin Johnson's, the Brett Favre's and shit. Mm -hmm. And like Warren Sapp, he, he's a, he's a pretty intimidating dude. Like, I mean, he, he don't pull no punches. He's, he's, he's aggressive. I mean, he's from he's from Apaca, Florida. It's, it's a very small yep. rural town down there. It's country as hell. Mm -hmm. And like, for whatever reason, me and Warren were always cool. And I just remember 
my first year, I didn't, I didn't buy a car. Right. So I just bought a, I bought a, I still have it. My daughter drives it to school. I had a little uh, specialized bike or whatever. My wife had a, uh, what, uh, 2003 Saturn Ion. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get a bike. I used to ride my bike down Harbor Bay Parkway, see the Golden Gate Bridge and shit, you know, it's the bay or whatever. And Fire. I just remember I was outside, like, talking on the phone or I don't know what I was doing, texting or something. And Warren's like, Stu. And he grabbed my bike and, and he had, that was when the, the Hummer truck first came out. And he took he took my bike and threw it in the back of the truck. He's like, "Let's go! I'll take you. I'll give you a ride home, man." I'm like, <laughs> I'm like all right. And I, I opened up the door and just spit bottles because he liked to chew, you know. Yeah. Saying? But I'm gonna tell you this, Warren. Damn, Sapp, country is fuck country. Warren Sapp's, and I told you this already. Warren Sapp's football IQ. Yes. Is very, 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 very high. And, you know, we saw Warren at the end, you know, at the later years of his yes. career, you know, mm -hmm. but that dude re reinvented the de defensive tackle position, man. Most definitely. And, like, I just, like, you didn't mess with Warren Sapp. But, yeah. again, like. One of the goats. We, I think he was cool with me because I never, like, tried to show up or do anything. He just saw my game and respected my game and respected the fact that I studied I yeah. knew my shit, and, like, I was going to go out there and ball out. Like, Warren Sapp, if you didn't know your shit, dude, he'd be like, no, nah, you ain't, I'm not fucking with you, dude. You're not – uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't – I'm not playing with you. I'm not going to have you fuck my shit up. Like, you don't know what the fuck you're yeah. doing. Like, Robbo, he ain't playing. Like, he wasn't going to play, you know, so – While we're talking about players real quick, because I, I, I want to know – I wanted to I wanted to ask you this question as well because we're working on get, – I'm working on getting him on the show as well. Um, what kind of dude was uh, Philip Buchanan? Shout out to Chili Man. Philip Buchanan is one of the best human beings you could ever meet. That dude, for coming from Miami and 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 kind of being in that that kind of you know that you like mentality and being a cornerback yeah. and like that dude was nice to everybody. Like he to this day, I, I remember. I don't know. It was, it was a couple of years ago. Like me and my buddies were. We were, we were at my house drinking or whatever, and we were talking about players or whatever, and Philip Buchanan came up, and I was like, well, shit, I got his number. And I called him. He's like, yo, what's up, Stu? And I hadn't talked to him in, like, 10 years. And, like, yeah. we talked for, like, an hour and a half. And, he yeah. like, he was telling me about what he's doing, and he, he is – he's a – he's a very, very cool human being, man. He, he's see, just – he's just a generally, like – you might kind of think, though, like, when you see him, he's kind of flashy and that type of stuff, but, like yeah. – if you talk to him, man, the dude's cool as hell. I see he still comments and hits like on all your pictures and stuff. He he seems like a real humble, down to earth guy, man. Shout shout to Philip Buchanan. We gotta get him on one of these shows. Yeah, soon. P Buck, P Buck, yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, real quick, shout to Raider Squid, man. I appreciate you as always, my brother. Um, Stu already pretty much shared his favorite memory of Al Davis, which was a great. That was one of my favorite um, stories I ever got out of Stu. Um, do you have one more? situation with Al. I mean, there, actually, there was two of them. There was one when you went in the office. And there was another one where he said that, you know, Al Davis has his guy every year and you were his guy. Is there so, any other any other quick story that you have? Yeah, yeah. Al Davis? Um, so Al Davis, like he, he didn't get up till about noon and then he would come in the facilities about one. That's why our practices were later. Yeah. He wanted to make sure he was at practice and then he'd stay after and watch every period, like every individual period, every special teams period, every walkthrough, like, yo, you need your jerseys on because Mr. Davis wants to know, like, even through a walkthrough, like, why we got to wear our jerseys? Like, so Mr. Davis knows who the fuck is out there and what they're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, we always knew, like, towards the end, like, we had long-ass hallways over there in Harbor Bay Parkway, right? Yep. And, like, you didn't want to – like, you turned on the hallway and it's, it's Al Davis – you know, and he always he always had his like assistant that was yeah. you know because at that time he he had a walker and stuff uh -huh. you know and yeah you didn't want to walk down the hallway because it's just it's just you and him like because uh, <laughs> you know how it is like with your boss like yeah yeah it, you try to get away with them, but like this dude like runs the show so it's always like you're always <laughs> kind of uncomfortable so we always knew when he was coming around so we'd always ask the rookies. 
like, yo, can you go get me a Gatorade? And we knew like Al Davis was coming through and they'd run out and get <laughs> Talking a conversation with Al. But my my story was uh, in 05, after that Miami game, my first interception, right? Uh, in the end zone, in the end zone. In the end zone, I had 10 tackles. I had a forced fumble on Ronnie Brown, a fumble recovery. So we lost, though. Hell of a game. And I'm like, okay, so this is Monday. So I'm I'm feel like when you play good, like you hang out at the facilities. Like you, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? You're like, when you play like shit, dude, you don't want nothing to do with the facility. Yeah. So I was like getting extra treatment or whatever. It was Monday. Everyone had already left. And I'm coming out of the – the uh, we had like a whirlpool and a cold tub, and I'm coming out of the, the training room, and I, I make that right. It is, it's a long ass hallway, <laughs> and it's just Al, it's Al coming. You know, he's got his towel, he's got his starter Raiders shit. You know, the shit got, you got on his buddy, his buddy, uh, his, like the dude that kind of was the guy named Chris. I can't remember his last name, but kind of the guy that would work out. He because he go in the weight room and like you know do his little rehab and all this shit, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, okay, cool. I can't wait. I, shit, I want to see Al Davis. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's game or whatever. <laughs> but I'm walking up and unknown to me, you don't ask how Davis, how, Al Davis, how he's doing after a loss. Mm. You don't do that. I didn't know it. And I'm like, hey, Mr. Davis, how you doing? And he goes, how am I doing? He said, Stuart, how am I doing? We just lost to the worst team in the AFC and you want to come ask me how the fuck am I doing? <laughs> fuck, hey, fuck about me. How the fuck are you doing? I, go, <laughs> I said, oh, sh-. I'm like, not that good. And I sprinted down the hallway and jumped in the locker room. I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, yeah, it's fucking like, comedy, listen, though care how you play we did not win and that's the fucking name of the fucking game is wins and losses and even though you think you play good it wasn't enough to win so you could have played better i'm like oh shit. hey still let me let me get this super chat in real quick and i want you to tell that after that the nation what that is playing behind us okay shout, okay. Out, yeah, yeah. shout, shout out to my brother uh, gabriel montez appreciate you on a donation brother he said what's up puto nothing like a monday night hanging out with my raider family Good content, guys. Warren Sapp had nasty breath. Laugh out loud. <laughs> cool. He's stupid, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Gabe, man. Shout out to my brother Gabe. Um, <laughs> what, what, what is that right there, bro? So so my wife, uh, this is about six months ago. Okay. She got a hold of NFL Films. And NFL Films, if you're, I don't know how many plays you need to be a part of or whatever, but NFL Films will go through and search any any all of their um, what do you call the archives. it video archives. video directory or whatever and the archives find yeah. every play that they have um, of you. So like that's in Denver like that Monday night game when we beat uh, Denver when it was snowing out and stuff. So this it's about ten and a half minutes of like legit ass like NFL Films footage of me just actually wrecking shot man like there's like there's a lot of me tackles of one-on-one -on -one against Ladonian. a lot of tackles of me and tony gonzalez a lot of tackles of ronnie brown here here's right here is uh i think that no that's not Maurice Jones drew but this is my rookie year but yeah it, it's actually really cool footage that i'm gonna i'm gonna try to cut it up and i'm gonna try shut up <laughs> god damn man stop you gonna put it on your youtube right well, I need, I need to get a fucking, I need to get a, uh, yeah, I'm going to, yeah. yeah. Carl, we, we'll, we'll talk behind the scenes and we'll, we'll, we'll get it together. We'll get it together. Hey, yeah, real quick. There's some, there's some really cool footage on there, man. Bro, I've been watching it the whole time, bro. Reading the comments and looking back behind you while you've been talking. There hey, you know, that, that's against Michael Turner. Yeah, but. Hey, hey, real quick. Raider fan wants to know, how was it to work with uh, two awesome kickers with Seabass and uh, Leckler? Dude, they are the, they're. Here's the thing. Like, kickers. Like you just gotta kind of deal with them, man. Like they're just like they're just some weird ass dudes. Like <laughs> in high school and college, like they're part of your team, but like they do their own. Like they're on their own schedule. Like yeah. you just during games, you don't talk to them. They're they're a head case and shit. But like Shane Leckler and Sebastian Janikowski, those dudes are 
they're the best, bro. Like, they are not, like, normal kickers. kickers. Yeah. So, like, during training camp up in Napa Valley, so that was uh, back when Joe Albanzano was the special teams coach. And we would have special teams in the morning. So you had the, the two one two one practice, right? So you had special teams in the morning, yeah. and then in the afternoon, no special teams, and then the one a day practice special teams. So Joe Avizano would come in. We do our special teams. Seabass and Shane, right? I remember I I, I just check it into the hotel, and there's a huge refrigerator. A dude's like has that on dolly, like bringing a big ass fridge into Shane and. Uh, uh, Seabass's room. I'm like, what the fuck you, dude? Fill with beer, all beer. I knew, I knew you were gonna say that. All beer, right? So these dudes at 9 a.m. Right? They have our, we have our special day. It's like 15 minutes. We do punt. We do a couple field goals. We do a couple kickoffs. Yeah. Them dudes are on the golf course the whole day, and they would come back to special teams meeting <laughs> lit <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> Sea bass is like this. He's got a big dip in his like falling out of his face. He's like, Hey, Stu, man, don't worry, dog. You're gonna make this team, bro. And I'm like, Man, I'm like, Sea bass, but I'm like, I I appreciate your your stamp of approval, but I gotta focus on like the fucking plays here, okay? And they're just like, They're hitting me in the back of the head and shit. And I'm like, Man, these dudes, no, they're cool, dude. They're like, you don't find two special teams players like that, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. them dudes were like normal Fire. ass yeah. dudes. Because most, like I told you, most special teams guys, you just don't really fuck with them dudes. They're just they're on their own shit. But legendary Raiders at that too. Hey, real quick, Nizer, man, appreciate oh, you one more Hell time. Yeah, legendary Raiders. Legendary. Absolutely. Hey, shout out to my brother Nizer one more time. Appreciate you, King. He said we all heard Randy Moss say on TV that he was never a Raider. Did you ever sense that he was disinterested while he was with us? Great question, Nice. And shout out to my brother Nice. I'm glad I'm actually glad that came up because we had talked about Randy earlier. Um, so when Randy got signed, it was like in um I don't know, whenever Fusion started, what it'd be April, maybe February or March or something. And I lived out in Alameda. Like a lot of guys would, you know, fly in for the season and then during the off season, they're they're fucking they're out. Like I was yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And I remember when Randy Moss got signed, I went to his his press his press conference, and I just said, "Hey, I said, Randy, man, I'm Stewart. Uh, I play safety, man. I'm glad to have you on the fucking team. Been a big fan, man. Like good shit up there. And Randy Moss was one of the best teammates you could ever have. That guy, this dude, this dude will rent out a movie theater during the off season and have an adult film." and a family film and he come to practice and just give out all the tickets and you show up to the movie theater. It's just us. You have the popcorn, pizza, beer, uh, whatever the hell, uh, wow. gobstoppers, all that shit. Right. And then he'd also rent out bowling alleys and just, wow. Hey, y'all come the whole bowling alley. was just Raiders players. Bring the family. His family was there again, beer, Food, pizza, pretzels, fucking, you could be there all day long. And that dude was one of the funniest guys you ever met in your life. Like, he was, he took it very serious, but what happened was, is he didn't have too much help. And you had Kerry Collins, who had a big arm, Mm -hmm. but, dude, he had like three or four DB, like, there was no one, I mean, Ron Curry was coming off of his, you know, his his, his Achilles shit. Yep. Jerry Porter was off and on. Doug Gabriel was off and on. Like mm-hmm. uh Elvis Witted was off and on. Like we really didn't have that other Yeah. Yeah. That other dude. I, I get it. I get it. So like he to be that good, to be that good, to be that good and play with an offense like that had to hurt. He 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 yeah. was just like, man, what do you want me to do? And then the fans got on him talking to him. I mean, dude, he was beat the fuck up, dude. Like, yeah. You talking about three DBs zeroing in. Just on him, just wah, wah, wah. And he's he's not the biggest. He's, yeah, he's real thin. Oh, shit, but he's yeah. lean. Yeah. So he was just beat up, he, you know, and, and then all of a sudden the fans are questioning his his his, um, his heart, loyalty, his heart. Yeah. And, like, he just kind of was like, you know what, man? Like, fuck it, dude. Like, if this is how it's going to be, man, then I, I, I guess I'm not a writer. 
Yeah. Well, there you go. Hey, I hope that answered your question, Isaac. And that was a man, I, I didn't know. A lot of talk about, you know, uh, Randy, Randy Moss behind the scenes, but to hear he was a, a, a good teammate. Listen, and if, if, if Randy Moss could have been the best receiver for the Raiders, he definitely would have, dude. Trust me. There you go. And I he like came, that. He came in to be that long, and he was the true yeah. definition of the fucking. Deep threat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, J Kojo, man, shout out to you, brother. He said, what's up, Docs? And, Stu, I was at that Miami game when you got that INT in the end zone. It was a shame the defense played great and Collins played like crap. Again, uh, it, and here's the deal. I mean, I, I God damn it. I, I hate. I know I, you don't want to throw carry under the bus. Oh, I, I got to tell the truth. I mean, it yeah. is what it is. Bro, we all watched. We all watched. I mean, I, I get like it's. it's, it's I'm telling you, know. you, man. It was the it was the offensive line, dude. It really was. It, and I love I love Robert Gallery. I came out with Robert Gallery. He's a Big Ten dude. Jake Grove, Barry Sims, uh, um, uh, Langston Walker, uh, Brad Badger. Uh, who uh, who else was on that fucking offensive line? Uh, it just they didn't have the coaching, man. They, they yeah. really like they were. It wasn't that they didn't have the ability. They were just too confused on what the fuck was going. They weren't on the same page. I'm telling you, man, I had no idea how much the offensive line needs to like communicate and know, like, yeah, like terminology and stuff. Until when I was a volunteer, speaking of coaching, a volunteer coach at Saginaw Valley State University, which is a D2 school in Saginaw, I was coaching the tight ends and like, dude, the offensive line has to know a ton of shit, dude. Yeah. Like, and you need the center needs to fucking set the fucking where the mic is, and then everything plays off of that. And the quarterback needs to make his adjustments, and the offensive line needs to be able to know what the quarterback's doing. And it has to be this whole meshing shit. And there was no, there yeah. was no, uh, there was no, uh, what do you call it? Uh, shut up! God damn. <laughs> there was no cohesiveness. Yeah, no cohesiveness, no chemistry. Um, real quick, man. I like this question real quick. Shout out to Christian and my brother Emmerich, man. Happy birthday to both of you guys in the comment section. If you guys can, man, put them happy birthdays in the Hold comments. Up. Hey, 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 real quick though. Talking about Kerry Collins. So when you're a quarterback and, and like, you're not sure if your offensive line knows what's going on, bro. Like you're sitting back there and you got some, you got some beasts trying to rip your face off. Like, you're gonna you're gonna get gun shy with some shit. Like you're gonna you're yeah. like you don't know what the hell is going on because you don't trust that you have that like like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Like they knew their offensive line. Like yes, okay, I, yeah. I have one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, and then they do their shit. Like Kerry was like, I man, I don't know what's gonna happen, dude. Like I, and he wasn't the most mobile quarterback. I mean, he was a big boy, you know. So he just left it up to his arm and he would just chuck that bitch and Randy Moss is running, but they got three dudes trying to, so it was, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole combination, man. It's not just one person. It's, yeah. it's everybody. Dude. That's why, that's why football is the greatest team sport in the world, dude. Let me ask you this, man. Another good question from that boy, Tsunami. He says, Stu, what, what was the toughest offense to game plan for? Oh, fucking Denver. Wow. Oh yeah. John Elway days. Them motherfucker! No, 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 no! Not Elway. That was Shanahan. That was Shanahan. It, it, it was. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, Jake the Snake. It was. Plumber. Oh shit, Plumber. Yeah, Plumber. Oh shit. Okay. So, hey, so Jake, Jake has some pretty good years too. I forgot about oh, Jake. Yeah. 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 So Denver. So here's what they did. So usually you go back four games. Like usually the offense four games. Like they rotate their plays, week one, week two. So week one's a, a off at offense. Week mm -hmm. two is a different one. Week three is a different one. Week four is a different one. And then they go back to week one. Well, Denver, dude, their shit was fourteen weeks. So like you, you never knew. Like you might game plan a whole week on certain formations and plays and sets, and you come out there. And they don't run – it's a whole new setup, like some yeah. shit that you had never seen before. So, like, yeah. Rob Ryan would be like, hey, guys, like, shit. We're watching film from, like, two years ago. Like, man, seriously? Like, 
He's like, yo, that's that's how far back they might pull some plays out. So what you had to do then was just play the responsibility of the defense. But it was Denver by far was always like, man, because I remember me and Nambi were like, dude, we're watching film and we're going, you know they're not going to probably run any of these fucking plays, like, at all. Like, we're studying all this shit, and, like, they're going to come out with a new formation. Uh, uh, they're going to put tight ends at fullback, fullbacks at wide receiver. They're going to motion shit. So it's like, yeah. should we even watch this film? Or, like, what the fuck? Because I guarantee you that it's – it's. but you did it, and then you come out, and, uh, again, they, they didn't run none of that shit. Oh, was it Kubiak was the offensive coordinator who went down to the Houston Texans, I think, as the yeah. head coach? Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. dude – 14 weeks. So they'd go new offense, new offense, new offense for 14 weeks. And then they might come back and run a couple plays from those first 14 weeks. That's crazy. Crazy. Crazy, dude. Holy it's it's like stupid. It's like coaches, they have too much time to fucking invent this shit. Like, it's like, dude, can That's we just go out there and just play some fucking football? Like, God damn. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to Dirty Raider, man. Uh, 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 Grumpy Raider, shout to uh, Raider Ruckus, Ascari, man. Everybody, Ruckus, in the building. Hey, Ruckus is in there. Ruckus, my boy Ruckus is in the building. Shout out to my guy Ruckus, man. Um, let me see, Namdi all day. A great Namdi story. You have a, you have a Namdi story? Uh, so I would just say that me and <laughs> oh, shit. me, no, 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 now Namdi's a different type of brother, man. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he's. He's on like a, 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 a intelligent, intellect. calm, collective. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Plays the piano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, his brother went to Stanford. His sister mm -hmm. went to U of M. Highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. Doesn't drink. Doesn't do drugs. Doesn't smoke. Doesn't chew tobacco. Like just like a like I don't. I mean, to me, that's a boring ass motherfucker. But that's his lifestyle, right? Like yeah. so, Nambi. I used to I used to go to his house and he would cut my hair while we used to watch the real world. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So I'd be Look, I'd be in his house. The real world. He, he'd be on the <laughs> piano first and he'd play some shit. And then I'd be eating cheese it's while he cut my hair watching the real world. That and like dude, that's obvious. the thing, man. That's that's one guy I'm I'm really not upset, but one guy I really miss. And I've tried to reconnect with him. I've reconnected with everybody from that era, but for some reason, like not like me and Nami were fucking close, bro. Like we were like when he got the uh the uh the what Raider Excellence Award or like basically yep. the MVP of the uh -huh. Raiders, you know, and I was the one who introduced him. And I'm like, I, I told you this story where I was yeah, like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, listen, this is the best shutdown corner that nobody knows about. And I'm like, trust me, he's going to be a household name. Like, Nambi would be like this. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> During the game, <laughs> he'd be like this. Stu, I don't give a fuck what they got going on that side. You help me over here. Fuck that shit. I'm like, I got you, man. Don't. <laughs> he's Nambi. like, Stu, over here. Fuck. Hey, not, it, dude, no, I'm guarding the best motherfucker. I need help over top. I'm like, damn, sorry, Fabian, but I gotta, I got. <laughs> he's doing real good in real life right now. He has a, oh, a, yeah. a successful acting career. Oh yeah, a, a beautiful, successful wife. Um, he's doing his thing, man. Shout out to our Raider legend, Nambi, man. No, Another I, question, man. I, okay, I call him new, new, me and Willie Brown call him Noomdi, Noomdi, <laughs> brother, brother Noomdi. <laughs> That's fire, man. Shout out to Justin saying, he says, question for Stu. How was the recruiting process? What other schools went after you? Oh, in college? Good question. Good question. In college? Yeah. So, in high school, I was a, um, I was an option quarterback and a safety. So, as an option quarterback, you're, you're, you're almost, I mean, I could throw the ball, but I was more of a runner. Like, I, I led my league in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns. So, like, my idol was Eric Crouch. I was like, I was like, yo, there's a white boy at Nebraska. Me. Running on fools, winning the Heisman. I'm like, yep. oh, shit. Like, oh, my God, this dude is doing his fucking thing. So, different schools were recruiting me. Like, Wisconsin was receiver. 
uh, Notre Dame, Indiana, Nebraska, and Syracuse were quarterback because they ran – Syracuse was an option, but they ran that yeah. kind of run mm-hmm. and shoot with Donovan McNabb, you know, yeah. a mobile quarterback type thing. Uh-huh. Um, Purdue was both. Like, Stu, you could play receiver or DB. So, like, the first school to offer me a scholarship was Michigan, the University of Michigan. They had just won the national championship in 97. I think that was my – after my freshman year, before my sophomore year, I went to camp, and they offered me a scholarship. And then Michigan State had Nick Saban as the fucking head head coach. Yeah. And when I took all my visits – so my official visits were Wisconsin, Notre Dame – Purdue and Michigan State, I I had not seen a head coach on the defensive side of the ball. Like all the head coaches just fuck with the offense. Yeah. So like your head coach is the D coordinator. But I'm watching the Nick Saban not only on the defensive side of the ball, but specifically with the DBs. And me and my dad were like, shit, man. I'm like, and this dude coached DBs in Cleveland, like, and dude. He had a Nick Saban football camp, right? That's crazy, bro. He had a Nick Saban foot Nick Saban one day football camp, and me and my dad yeah. went down there for it. Nick Saban spent the entire day, not at his camp, on a golf cart with my dad, driving around campus, just show. Went to his house. Me, him, and my dad had a couple beers and shit. Like, That's dope. My dad was like, "Yo, th- this dude wants you, man. Like this dude." And I'm like, Nick Saban. Like that was when he was just. Yeah, on his on his way up, and then and then Attention. he went and, get, and signed that first coach to sign a million dear a million dollar oh, contract with LSU, and then Bobby Williams came, and I'm like, uh, but Joe, I, I got to give props to Joe Tiller, Brock Spag, Jim Chaney, like you gotta you gotta think this. I was the number two, number two. So as a quarterback safety, I was considered an athlete, right? So you, when they rank players in super prep and that shit, I I showed you this before, but yeah, 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 yeah. I was considered an athlete. I was the number two athlete in the country in Michigan, who just won the national championship. The Wolverines, who offered me a scholarship, Michigan State, who was going to the fucking um, Orange Bowl with Nick Saban, and you got to think Purdue. Like this dude's coming into Michigan and going to try to recruit. The yeah. fucking number two player in the state behind Charles Rogers. Like, are you crazy? Yeah. And Joe Tiller came in and they had a game plan for me. And when I went down there, like each each college has a different feel. That's why I tell like young kids, like, you need to go to those universities and like be yeah. around the players and yeah. be like at practice because everything has an atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when I went to Purdue, you had Joe Tiller, Brock Spag. Jim Cheney, so Brock Spack was the defensive coordinator. Jim Ch- uh, Jim Cheney was the offensive coordinator, and like everyone's just like like it was like a good time. Drew Brees is over here, and fucking yeah. Vinny Sutherland was my host, and Vinny Sutherland was like the character on Varsity Blues Twitter, exactly yeah. same fucking character. Like I'm like, yo, I know, like Stu, listen, they brought me into a um, uh, like a, a room or whatever, and here's the thing too. I only talked at Purdue. I didn't talk to like some recruiting assistant or a spe- I only talked to Joe Tiller. Stu talked to some titties, y'all. Stu talked to about six pairs of titties and he was sold on Purdue. That's what happened. Six pairs of titties sold. It was sealed the deal. <laughs> I mean, I. Yeah, look, look, you ain't say, look, you, you, didn't, you didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> But I well I have I now have another story after that that sh- shit yeah motherfucker so <laughs> no but the only coaches I talked to was the head coach D coordinator and OC like that's it and they brought me into a room they said Stu they had a video of five plays on offense we see you doing five plays on defense we see you doing and five plays on special teams we see you doing right uh-huh. they were the first ones to come up with that shit well word got out that they did that then other schools started doing it. I'm like. Yeah, but you didn't – that wasn't your idea. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, They came up with that shit. Like, you're late on that shit. Yeah. And I just – dude, Joe Tiller, that motherfucker on his home visit, right? Again, number two fucking athlete in the country. Coming up to Michigan on – on you get one coach's visit, right? 
He comes up with Brock's back, and we're in my living room sitting there, and he's looking at me going. And while Brock's back's talking to my mom about academics and shit, and I'm like looking, I'm like, the fuck you? I'm like, coach, what you look at? He's like, the Stu, God, you got a big fucking nose. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh I said, shit. I said, yeah. He goes, how's that fit in a helmet? God damn it, <laughs> fucking no. I'm like, <laughs> that was his recruiting line. Come on, man. Like, are you serious? You're like, I'm sold. I'm going to Purdue. Fuck this shit. Oh my God, bro. That's hilarious. Hey, hey, real quick. I got a question on top of that. So if you if you hey, wish- God rest, Joe Tillers passed away way too early. Purdue 97, previous nothing. Yeah, 2008 after nothing. Joe Tiller was the fucking. Here's the thing about Joe Tiller though is, our graduation rate was like 94. percent He made sure that if you came to Purdue, you were gonna fuck. He didn't give a fuck about. Yeah, he wanted to win games, but you were gonna get a goddamn fucking degree because he made a promise to our parents. I love, I love that. If you come here, your yeah. son will get a degree, yeah. and if he doesn't, it wasn't because we didn't try. It's because that motherfucker did not want it, yeah. but. That's some real shit because a lot of universities, man, they get these kids and they just they shuffle me, them through. Let me ask you this. If you would have chose Michigan, Nick Saban, or Syracuse or Notre Dame, do you think your career would have went down the same traje- trajectory as being a third rounder? Uh, or, or do you think you would have been a higher? No. I, I, um, and I mean, I, like, obviously I, you can't, you don't know. But I mean, for, for my career at Purdue, and what I did, there's, I mean, I came to Purdue, started after two games. Yeah. Went to the, won the Big Ten at Purdue, right? Won the Big Ten. Hadn't, hadn't, Purdue had not been to the Rose Bowl since 1967. Yeah. Led the team in tackles. Led the team in interceptions. Go! Big Ten freshman of the year. Go! Playing out in Pasadena. Talk that shit. Four bowl games, graduated with a degree, met my wife, um, Playboy All-American, Purdue's all-time interception leader. Like, honestly, dude, like, you couldn't – you honestly couldn't write a better – like, I don't don't see me, like, what – less than winning a national championship or winning a Thorpe Award. Other than that, dude, like, you couldn't write – a better fucking like dude it was that's why it was my call Ray Buchanan Colin oh shit Shout yeah we, we're gonna get hit, hey we're gonna get his ass on the show but no that's why I moved back man like I, I have a lot of uh a lot of history out to my breast too, man. It's all love, baby. It's all love, baby. Get that shit off your chest. Get that shit off your chest. Ask Stu if he's ever seen E40. No, so you know, I, I mean I have a you know it's real when my bro get when my bro get emotional, man. You know it's real. You know it's real. You know it's real. I, I hey Stu, I love it, man. I love it. Come on, my boy, my boy uh, human, my boy human. It's all love. It's, Purdue is a, is is a is a place close to your heart. Ask dude, what's the craziest? Yeah, real men cry for show, sure, for show, sure, for show. Sure. You good, brother? Shout out to my brother. Yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> you all good, King? Do you think? <clears throat> I want to know. I want to know what brought that that raw emotion out of you. I want to know what what, what like what was it? Take your time, though. But what 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 was that that triggered that? Like, I feel like Purdue just me like that place means something to you. Well, let me see. Stu was blessed. Stu is blessed and a blessed life. It hit your heart. It's all great. Yes. Always appreciate well, no, I, I would say probably the biggest thing is, I, you know, I met my wife here. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. And I wouldn't have the family I have today if it wasn't. For, yeah, for Purdue. Yeah. 
And, and well, and Joe Tiller and Brock's back. So shout out to my bro Stu, man. I love you, brother. For real. For real, for real, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shouting, uh, 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 giving our brother support. Nose ring, y'all. Nose ring, nose ring. No boogie, no boogie. Uh, tears not a sign of weakness, brother. It's a sign of strength. Talk that shit. Talk that shit. Yeah, I know. And it was probably just the fact that, I mean, if I didn't come here, I wouldn't have my wife. I wouldn't have my kids. Yeah. You wouldn't. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's bring a little light to this, okay? So you wouldn't be, we already talked about you being an all-time leading interception leader at Purdue, right? But what were we talking about on the, on, on the phone earlier about, uh, and I got two uh, questions I'm going to ask real quick. Nice if I got you, and I'm going to get to the other one as well. Um, what are those, what, what, what was those statistics you were telling me on the phone earlier when I was in the oh, gym? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to hear this. The nation needs to hear this for, for, I, I didn't even know. Yeah. For all the shit, man, you know, that Stu had to endure playing in Oakland and all, you know, the, the crazy, the craziness from the fans and, um, all that great, all that crazy shit. Stu, break this down, brother. Break this down real quick so the nation can hear this. This is amazing because he has played for one of the franchises, actually probably the best franchise with secondaries ever, ever, like ever. So I mean, I mean if you talk about like if you if you come to Oakland in the secondary, dude, you you better be fucking like, dude, yeah. again, Lester Hayes, Willie Brown, uh uh Jack Tatum, um All of George them. Atkinson, yeah. uh yeah. uh, uh Van can... McElroy, uh Freaking even though uh, recent Charles Wilson, Charles Wilson uh, yeah. goddamn uh, uh, fuck from Saginaw, uh, from Tennessee, um, everybody corner, shit. Man, we got it. so many, we got so many different Saginaw boy. Man, we got to get Terry on here, man. That's my dude, I, bro. We, no, we have to. You know For what? Real. I got some pictures, man. I'm gonna go grab some in a second. I want you to see these. Um, oh, real quick, so read that. Yeah, read that up. Read that. I'm, I'm gonna go grab something real quick. I'm gonna show yeah. you something. Read, right. read that. Read that real quick. Today. So yeah. So I was looking and I was like, you know what? I just want to see, and I don't know even know why I was even looking it up, but I was just looking up all time stats for a defensive back for the Raiders, and I rank in the top twenty in three categories. So I'm ranked. Let's go. We'll go 16. So I'm ranked 16 all time in Raiders history for solo tackles. So there's only 15 players that have ever played for the Raiders that have more solo tackles than me. I'm ranked 17th all time for passes defended. So like knockdowns or interceptions or whatever. Talk that shit. And then I'm ranked 19 all time for assisted tackles. So that's three categories in the top 20 for an organization that's been here since what the 1960s. That's not too bad. No, that's great. And I think the nation needed to but hear that. Think about this. Think about this if I would have been able to sign that second contract. And see, we haven't even talked about that whole story. No, no, we're we're gonna save that. We're gonna save that for a story time with Stu. Because I told L. Davis to cut me. Oh, no, no, no. Save that. Sa- please save that. We, we got to we gotta wait up on that. Yeah. Look at, look at this picture right here. Me at training camp in Napa. <laughs> Terry McDaniel, boy. Bro, he, dude, he's – dude, that, he was a great track athlete. Who is this? This is Larry uh, – 24? That's, who is that? That's uh, – What's his name that came over from Dallas? I think he was like the Super Bowl MVP. He was trash for us. Not a, not a, um, not Larry Allen. Uh, no, Larry Allen was the, was the offensive lineman. Yeah, I'm tripping. Um, I forgot what, uh, not Woodson, Darren Woodson. No, not Darren Woodson. Hey, real quick, let me get, let me get these supers in real quick. Shout out to Nizer. What was your favorite and least favorite stadium to play at? Um, Seattle was fucking dope as hell. Yeah. Seattle was dope. Uh, Houston was dope as fuck. Uh, Baltimore was pretty fucking dope. Larry Brown. Larry Brown. That's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Brown. 
Um, Lambo, just because it was Lambo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It ain't shit though. I mean, literally, you're driving through like a neighborhood, and you make a right, and then also in the stadium is there, like literally in like a fucking, like just a fucking neighborhood. <laughs> And all of a sudden, like, where the fuck are we at a high school? And all of a sudden, this is their Rambo. <laughs> uh, a shit stadium. Ours. <laughs> no, nah, uh, Candlestick was shit. That shit was garbage, man. Candlestick? Yes. That shit oh, was, shit. that shit was, that shit. The locker room from, like, the way the stadium was set up with, like, fuck-ass red maroon bullshit, whatever the fuck it was, and... Like the wind coming off the water, it was. I would. San Diego Stadium was fuck ass too. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And you know what? So was Kansas City. Kansas City shit was garbage because they always played the SEC championship game, and those motherfuckers. Every time we played them, they was there. Was, it was just dirt, and they would spray paint the field green to look like grass. It was garbage, and they had that fuck ass <laughs> band in the south end yeah. zone. That shit was terrible, dude. That shit was terrible. <laughs> so fuck, I, hey, fuck San Francisco, fuck San Diego, and fuck <laughs> Kansas City. Denver Amber, was tight. Denver was tight. Emmerich, you hear that? Happy birthday, Niner, motherfucker. Shout out to my brother Emmerich in the chat. Um, hey, that, no, but that mile high shit, the lung shit, that shit's real, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that bro, shit's real. Yeah. No, I, I know. I, I've, been to, I've been out there. I, I know. Shout and I, but I never played there, but I know it's 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 tough. Shout out to uh Pennsylvania Raider, man. My worst coaching blunder I can remember was in I think '96 when Mike White decided to kneel three times and missed the field going lost. Stu, what was yours? Great question. Great question. Wait, hold on, read that. <laughs> so Pennsylvania Raider says my worst coaching blunder blunder I can remember was when in '96 I think with Mike White he decided to kneel three times and then missed the field going lost. Stu, what was yours? Oh. Holy shit. Shout out to you, Pennsylvania Raider, my bro. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is hilarious. Um, well, I you, you mean, as a, as, well, I never really made a coaching de- I mean, no, what, a like, decision I was a part of? Or? Like, yeah, a coaching blunder that you could think of a coach that, what are your coaches that did something crazy? I like that question. I mean, that's a good. I would say just not like a certain play, but like a coach who who runs the wrong personnel or the wrong group. Like, so if you have base personnel, right? So base personnel, you you have a Mike or which is a middle linebacker, a Sam linebacker which is strong, and a Will which is weak, and you have safety. So the offense comes out in ten personnel, which would be. Four receivers and a running back. Yep. Obviously, you should switch the dime. And some coaches, they get caught up in the shit, and, and they run like a blitz with the outside linebackers and have a safety guarding a slot receiver. Like, motherfucker, you're about to get me cut, dude. Like, what the fuck, bro? I, <laughs> you don't pay me to guard a slot wide receiver, motherfucker, with no help. Like, dude, check check dime package, bring in Stanford route and fucking Fabian Washington on some dime shit. And Doug yeah. Warren Sapp even said it. He's like, Stu, dude, they're leaving you off to dry, bro. That you like they're fucking you. I'm just telling you, they're fucking you by running that defense and running a fucking blitz on 10 personnel because you are not paid to guard a slot receiver. And if the blitz don't get there, dude, you're fucked. Fucked. You're fucked. So that would probably be just like that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do know this. <laughs> Actually, I, I want to say it, it was in 06. It might have been in Baltimore. Or there was a game where <laughs> they're on they're, – the offense is on their side of the field, like the 23 or 25-yard line. Yeah. And it's like fourth and 20. And Art Shell wants to go for it. Rob Ryan says, you mother – Fucker, if you fucking you punt that fucking ball because you ain't gonna get it. You're gonna set my defense up and be on the 23 yard line, first and ten. You cocky son of a bitch, mutt. Like I remember on the sideline, like you fucking asshole, you punt that fucking ball. I was like, whoa. And what happened? We we did we didn't convert, huh? 
No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No. No, no, no. I didn't know. I think it was another sack. Because uh, oh. Andrew Walter got sacked, what, three or four times in a row? It was an NFL record. Andrew fucking Walter. Oh, my God, bro. Let, no, let, we actually, I think it was an NFL record. We got sacked four plays in a row. Oh and Rob Ryan said, you motherfucker, you punt that fucking ball. We ain't going to win this goddamn game, and you are not going to put my defense out there like that, motherfucker. Oh, my. Fourth and – holy. Yeah. Change, change the subject, man. Shout out to Kojo, man. First of all, he said Larry Brown was trash. This is facts. Uh, Stu, is it true that you guys were not allowed to cuss at Purdue because your head coach would punish the team? At Purdue? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Kojo, nope. Where'd you hear that at, brother? Put uh, leave it up. Yeah, I like it. Might I mean they might have maybe the coach, the fuck ass coach, and I was doing that shit. Shout out to Chris. He said this duo is Stu and Docs is epic, man. We appreciate you, brother. We appreciate you guys always pulling up, man, and having fun with us. Um, I've seen another question that was who was the hardest player to tackle? Well, you gotta there's two ways to ask that question because. A hard player to tackle would be like a hard player like Barry Sanders or like goddamn uh, Walter Payton, who like that's a like there's two different people. So I'd say as far as like boom, boom, boom would be either LaDainian Thomason or yeah. Dante Hall, just okay. because like them motherfuckers could teak, teak, teak like this. Dante Hall. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Okay. He's a beast. From Texas A&M. Actually, he played with Shane Leckler. He played with Shane Leckler. I, I, yep. um, I'd say, like, you better like you better do some extra shoulder shrugs, like, during the week of practice and shit, like, because that motherfucker's going to come bring it to your ass. Uh, Ronnie Brown, dude, that motherfucker was. Oh, yeah, you always spoke about Ronnie Brown really highly, too. That motherfucker, dude. And actually, I just saw Ronnie Brown on Instagram. I don't even know if he knows it, but he had pictures of his kids or whatever. I'm like, hey, respect to a dude that's a father. Mm -hmm. um, Ruben Drones. Ruben Drones was a tough motherfucker. Yeah, I haven't heard um, that name in a long time either. I'm a I, I didn't have the – I played against him, but didn't have the privilege of tackling him was Adrian Peterson, bro. Like, <sighs> Steven Jackson. Oh my god, I can only imagine that. Holy that big ass shit. that that motherfucker was like 6'3, like 240, would look like the fucking predator. Yeah, yeah predator running, yeah, running at your ass. Like, dude, big like motherfucker. Hey, what was your best moment as a raider? Shout out to uh Jahan Batu. Is it just being drafted? Was it the draft process or just the best moment, period? Um I'd have to say that interception, the interception against Miami would have to be, we're like, finally, as a DB, like, Al Davis brought me in here to create turnovers, like, and I finally get that bitch. Like, it yeah. would have to be, it'd have to probably be that, like, like, to have an interception in the NFL, like, that's, because them quarterbacks are good, man. Put your video back on real quick, Stu. Oh, Hey, while, while you're saying that, so that's the it, was that your best game stats wise? Also, Leon wants to know. You know what? That probably, I mean, if you look at it again, interception, forced fumble, fumble recovery, 10 tackles, and guess who the coach was for Miami? Nick Saban. <laughs> That shit. He well, was no, no, like, no, 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 no. I love no. Listen, I love Nick Saban, and I was like, he came up. He's like, Stu, man, I wish I could have. He goes, I wish I could have recruited you in LSU, but I couldn't. Like, once yeah. you leave, you can't recruit the guys you're recruiting. Yeah. And I almost, me and my dad were like, yo, let's let's try to let's try to get his. Like, cause back then, how do you get a hold of somebody? Like email or like fucking like we yeah, didn't know how to real. fucking. Yeah. But my dad was like, dude, Nick Saban. Like you were his fucking guy, man. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I'm going on the LSU. Like, fuck. They won a national championship down there. Hey, hey, real quick. We got a. Um, oh shit. Let me see. Yeah, we got ten more. Ten more minutes. Let me see. Damn, I'd be sore as fuck. Stu, what's your? Okay, I like this. Stu, what's your most hated team outside of the AFC West? Uh, 
Washington. The Redskins, or whatever you want to call them. Okay. Yeah, don't, hey, don't start that shit. Uh, yeah, we ain't gonna do that shit. Um, don't get. Hey, don't bring Chief Wahoo back in this motherfucker. Oh, G gonna come in here and start tripping. Yeah, man, dude. The, the Redskins killed my career. Me going to Washington after I left Oakland. Oh, okay. I get it. Why? I get it now. I get it. And they were the most uppity, twittity, fucking white collar, fucking. Yeah. Uh, dude, so so oh, uh, Schneider, right? Schneider's the owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that he would make the opposing team pay for parking. Holy shit! He would make us pay for parking when we drove into the stadium. Like Al Davis had to cut a check to to Schneider for parking. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah wow, dude. it's some fuck ass shit, dude. He's he's. Bro, I've never heard of any shit like that. That's crazy. I never did either. I'm like, so wait, 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 you had to you had to get a parking pass to fucking park the bus inside the stadium. They're like, yeah. I'm like, bro, wow. that is some fucking foul ass shit, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, hey, real quick, I just want to I want to give somebody some light because they want some. Uh, fuck you, man. You always ignore me. Got you, Aaron. I'm gonna uh, ignore you again. Uh, real quick. Hey, shout out to my brother. Uh, he wanted to know how are two a days. Shout out to Reese Rock. Two a days, man. Two, dude. It was. It was. Let's see. It was six weeks. Six fucking weeks. Back when we had four preseason games. So you had you had the first week, and then you had an inner squad inner squad scrimmage, and then you had the next week, and you had the first preseason game. And while you're doing all the preseason games, dude, we're in Napa from 6 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night. Like, it was just – I'm not bitching about it, but yeah. it was just – bro, it was like – when I was listening to fucking – okay, so here, I, I told you earlier. Uh -huh. I, I probably spoke out of context talking about Shannon Sharp. Mm -hmm. I had never really – I listened to him, but I never really listened to him until tonight. And let me let me tell y'all the reason why he listened to him is because this channel made national TV today. You know what I'm saying? We made undisputed with Shannon Sharp and yep. uh and Skip Bayless, man. Yep. Let's go. But go go ahead. I just wanted to shoot my shit real quick. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. So I always thought Shannon Sharp was kind of a flamboyant, kind of loud mouth, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was listening to him today talk about. You know, Gruden getting mad about the fight and stuff. And he was talking about training camp. And he was like, listen, man. He's like, back when we had two-a-days, like, that shit was a fucking grind. Like, dudes, get this. And this made me laugh like a motherfucker. Was you would have a practice, right, in uh -huh. the morning. You'd shower. And you knew you had about three hours to eat, get taped, and sleep. So, motherfuckers would shower after practice, go get taped, then go eat and sleep being taped because they'd give you an extra five minutes of some sleep when fucking you were fucking. I was like, oh shit, I forgot about that shit. Motherfuckers would get taped before, after the first practice, getting ready for the next practice. Like, dude, you had a three hour practice. In the hot in the hot sun, lunch, and then you had to come back and do a whole dude, full pads, like a whole nother practice, six weeks every day. That's crazy, like, bro. And now you want to know why motherfuckers fight? Dude, yeah, and here's yeah. the other funny part. And I, I remember this shit. Shannon was talking about this. He's like, yo, man, this practice is getting old. Hey. Should we start a fight? <laughs> let's just, let's, hey, bro. Let's, let's just start a fight so the coach cancels practice. The tricks of the trade right there, man. Hey. Hey, hey ladies. Bit. Hey. Come in. Y'all motherfucker. You know what? Go back to the hotel. Like, 
Hey, hey, real quick, I got <laughs> I got a couple more questions real quick before. Uh, when he, no, started. hold on. When he said that shit, like, hey, bro, should we start a fight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that shit low-key genius, bro. Uh, hey, Hammers, uh, matter, matter of fact, shout out to my, my boy uh, David, man, my, my big homie. He asked, were you a fan of uh, Van McElroy? You know what? So... I learned about Van McElroy. He's a he's a sports agent, and he actually he was one of the top three agents I was going to pick when I was going through agents. Played at Baylor, white safety. Played yeah. for at the time, you know, I didn't know I was going to go to the Raiders, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I spent a lot of time with Van McElroy. I'd like I'd like to reconnect with him if I could. A boy, forty one. Am I forty one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Dude, that dude. That dude has like. 37 interceptions or some shit. I mean, he, he was a beast. He was a beast. Hell yeah. Shout out to my brother Hammer's house, man. I appreciate you on a donation, my brother. What do you miss the most about the game? Is there anything in your career that you would do different? I would say, you know what? I think I, I, I talked to you earlier about this. Yes. The, the one thing I wish I, I had the social media mm -hmm. to be able to reach out to the fans because – I would I would be all over that shit, bro. Like not not to where it's detrimental and like yeah, yeah, yeah. taking up away from the team shit, but like trust me, guys. I'm just telling you this, Raider Nation. We have a lot of downtime, bro. We have a lot of downtime, and yeah. like motherfuckers that want to act like they're too busy for some shit, they're not. They're not. Like, dude, there's a lot. When the season happens. Yes. When the season – especially when we leave on Friday for an East Coast game. Dude, that Sitting all day Saturday, seat. dude, you are doing nothing. Literally, you're not doing anything. Unless yeah. you got family in town and you want to go – like, literally, guys would fucking go bowling and, like, go shopping. Like, dude, like, you have nothing to do I at do. all. And there's yeah. no requirements, no nothing. So, I would be – Addressing the fans like, hey, listen, I know I can't, you know, I mean, some of these guys have a hundred thousand followers and shit, right? Like, mm -hmm. so I know you like you can't talk to every fan, but at least some of them got millions. Of them got go, millions. Shit. Hey man, listen, I appreciate the love. I, I I'm gonna try to get to everybody. I can't yeah. get to everybody. Yeah. I love y'all. I'm gonna give you what's real. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go out there. That, hey. To be honest with you, here's here's what here's my game goals, and but you, you see here's the thing when you when you give your goals, that's that's some real ass shit because when you tell people what you expect out of yourself, and you don't perform it, it's a letdown, yeah. but it's also holds you accountable. Yeah. So if I say this, yo, tomorrow morning, dude, listen, I'm gonna have ten tackles. I'm going to have a fumble recovery, and we're going to win this game. That's my goal. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I don't do that shit. Yeah. Be like, what the fuck, dude? What happened? <laughs> what the fuck happened? But you know what, though? It takes balls to put that shit out there. Hey, let me ask you this. Did you ever get a chance to face the Raiders once you left when you played with Washington? I didn't. I w I, that was one thing I wish I, I could have. Yeah. I wish I could have. That was one thing I thought would have been kind of cool to go back on the other side of some shit. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, no I, I never did. I never did. Okay. No. Shout out to the chat game, man. We're going to save some of these questions because we're going to be doing this a lot. We don't want to get every single question in on, on one show, man. Ask, I got a question. Let's go. Let's go. Who in the fuck is going to be there uh, September, what, 13th? Is it September 13th? Who's going to be there? September 13th? For the Monday night game. Or no, September. What, what's the Monday night game? I will be there September 13th. Fuck you. I know you're going to be. I'm not asking you, oh. motherfucker. <laughs> hey, everybody in the comment section, who is going to be at the game week one, Allegiant Stadium versus the Baltimore Ravens? And, and there's a reason why Stu wants to know. So who is going to be at the game? Hey, I'm just going to say this. Hey, listen, Raider Nation, I'm just going to say this. 
as a former option quarterback, I'm a fan of Lamar Jackson. I mean, I just like I'm not mad at you. That dude is fucking because you know why I like him? Because he gave props to Michael Vick. He gave yeah. props to Michael the Vick. The go to that game, the, the, bro. Vick was different, bro. Vick was bro, different. Michael Vick, that dude. Bro, you pick him and Madden, it was like picking Bo Jackson and Tecmo Bo. Dude, like, because you would go. You, you, you know, you'd, you'd run a shotgun and have all the receivers, and you sit back and then just. Just run right around. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> well, hey, anybody who's going to be there, y'all, um, hit me up. We're definitely going to link up. I'll, I will for sure be um, with Stu out there at least a few times while we're out there, man. We would love to get the nation together. Let's get some drinks. Let's talk some Raider football in person. Um, you know, that, that, that's, what, that's what this is about, man. We are, we're a family. We would love for everybody to get together, man, uh, talk some shit, shoot this shit. Um, just like Stu, I, like I always say, and what Stu always says, we're just regular motherfuckers, man. Cra crazy Raider guys that love this shit and just love to interact with everybody, man. So um, most definitely hit us up. Wait, um, hold up, though. Hey, what happened with Renfro? The GOAT. <laughs> The GOAT. The GOAT, man. Let's go. Hey, he cooked Jalen Ramsey's boots, man. Hey, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he smoked his boots. Let me see. That goddamn picture of him. <laughs> Bruh, with the baby. <laughs> Ren GOAT. Ren GOAT. Hey, Raider v -Row. I'm working on it, brother. I'm working on it. I promise you, man. It's no, hold on, though. I got a serious question. I'm trying to figure out what to wear for that. Oh, hold on. Our, our, our boy, our boy, I want to ask you real quick. This Raider Ruckus. I know for a fact Stu's favorite coach was the defensive coach for the Detroit Lions. Hold. Who was that? My. Oh, what? Say it again. Your favorite coach was the defensive coach for the Detroit Lions. No, no. So, 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 so. One of one of my favorite coaches is. Rod Marinelli, he's the defensive line coach now. for the Raiders now. Mm -hmm. He was the head coach, and he brought me in to Detroit. So he's he's a badass. Probably not the best head coach, yeah. but that dude, like, he was a straight hard hat, lunch pail, like, yo, if you do work, man. But unfortunately, sometimes you need a little bit more than like just yeah you know. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait. No, I, dude, I, I'm telling you, like uh, you, get, well, you get to talk to him in a few weeks for new days. Like I told you, Greg Olson, yep. the offensive coordinator for the Raiders, yeah, was the uh, quarterback coach at Purdue. And when I was getting recruited, his wife Lisa Olson was the track coach at Purdue. She was recruiting me for track, which is my wife's coach, and he calls his son Little Stu. And his son's a fucking dude. His he had twins. His one daughter is six foot four volleyball player. His wife was an all American track athlete at Washington State. And his son's like six foot two, like two hundred pounds. Like so anyway, so like there's mad connections. Like, dude, Greg Olson's a shit, bro. Like he's Hey, I like this one right here. I've never heard of this shit. B Marquez says, I remember an interview Stu gave about training camp and how it helped clear gastric a uh, gastric acid. With all the running, does he remember that? I didn't. Stu was high. Huh? Gastric acid. <laughs> Stu was high as shit. <laughs> B, Mar B Marquette. I remember an interview Stu gave about training camp and how it helped clear gastric acid with all the. Oh no, lactic acid. Oh, okay. Not gas. He, that's a typo on his part. Lactic, lactic acid. Hell yeah, no, no, yeah, no. That no, that is legit. Bro, Stu, what the fuck is lactic acid? Lactic acid is when uh, oxygen in your blood, because that's what I mean. Your blood needs oxygen. So, like when you're running and you're fucking tired, lactic acid builds up, and that's what makes your shit like feel like your legs are heavy. Yeah, you don't have oxygen in your blood. Oh, okay. So, like, the better you train and the more you train, your body builds up that lack – not not builds up the lactic acid, but the better shape you're in, the lactic acid doesn't build up. Yeah, gotcha. so 
No, he's yeah, he he's he's legit. Yeah, that's right. Holy shit, bro! I've never heard. The, that. Dude, how do I remember this shit though? Like, what the fuck? How do I remember that? How do I remember fucking Robert Jackson? I I don't know where the fuck my house is at right now. To be honest with you, I don't even know where my car's at. But I don't know where all this shit. none of that shit's at. But I remember that lactic acid's kind of and. I, re- I knew it without even knowing what the fuck, because he spelled it wrong. Oh, yeah, the lactic, or, or, or uh, whatever the fuck it was. Galactic, Aurora. galactic. <laughs> Aurora, I seen that. I seen that. I love it. Josh just commented. Josh Jacobs just commented under the Raiders' recent post on Instagram saying, um, in L- we're in L.A., and Josh Jacobs put home team with the emoji like this. Pretty much, we run L.A. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Josh Jacobs. I love it, man. He on there trolling, man. Let me see. Uh. Is he from LA? He's like no, he's from Oklahoma City. Yeah, Barry Sanders. I mean, Barry Sanders. Or, or Tulsa, Tulsa. I'm sorry, Tulsa. I think Tulsa, Tulsa, yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. Barry Sanders from Oklahoma. Yep, one of the shit, the goat, my favorite running back of all time. Don't Ever. get me started. Hey, him, Bo, and Marcus, man, are my guys. Um, let me. I see. can't fuck with Marcus like that, dude. I can't. I don't know for some reason. I just. Uh, I, no, don't say but that. But you know what, though? I, I, I never met him. I don't know him. I never heard nothing about him. So that's rude for me to even say that because I just. Marcus Allen? I don't know. Okay. And hey, we got to figure out. We got to figure out how to get you to meet Marcus Allen so you can change your tune on this shit. I say this. Fuck Priest Holmes and fuck Larry Johnson. I know that. Fuck that real Raider shit. That's what I'm talking about. Fuck Terrell Davis. Fuck uh, Tatum Bell. Fuck uh, all, all of them. Fuck as Denver's have. Uh, 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 Maurice Claret was there for a minute. Yeah, Ohio State. Actually, I, actually, you know what though? I like all those dudes. They're cool as shit. Tatum Bell, <laughs> Maurice Claret. <laughs> They're on, actually, the, all, on the field. On the field. Fuck them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck those yeah. hoes. Fuck that yeah. shit. Um, hey, somebody real quick says, Stu, would you have played a linebacker? JP said, well, Stu, would have, would you have played linebacker? You know what? I, I was. That's funny that they brought that up because I was thinking about my NFL combine and I, I was thinking of um, the dude from Clemson, number 44 with us, uh, who I like. Is it 44 or what, what's his name? Clemson. The safety that we drafted from Clemson that's now a linebacker. Oh, Tanner Muse. Yes, Muse. Mm-hmm. And I was like, because that dude actually ran a faster 40 than me. I'm like, what the fuck? Bro, he's fast. And I was like, I wonder why I was thinking that. Like, I was thinking like I, I didn't. I was wondering why Rob Ryan wasn't like, "Hey, let, let me put you at like Sam or Will, actually Will, because Will's more of the athletic linebacker." But yeah, they never did that shit. I was too athletic, man. I had, I had, uh, I was too fast. I had a, I had too big of a dick to play linebacker. <laughs> and a nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my nose was too big to play with. Right oh shit, bro! I used to break my shit regularly. Derek Burns would be like, "Did you break your nose yet, Stu?" I'm like, "Not yet." He's like, "Well, break that shit. Let's go, homie." I'm like, Kush. "Fuck!" <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, record says, "Hey, Stu, two words: Gun- uh, Gunther Cunningham." <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that means, but Stu walked off. So I know that shit is real. Oh, <laughs> shit. Matron Means. I haven't heard that name in a while. Bro. How does he, how does Ruckus know about Gunther Cunningham? Who the hell is Gunther Cunningham? Oh, I actually, you know what? <laughs> you told him? No, I know how he knows. Because <laughs> I talked to, I talked to Ruckus for about three hours one night and we got into some real ass shit and, Gunther Cunningham, who was a defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, who was my defensive coordinator in Detroit, mm. who I thought, God, I don't want to get into it right now. I say that, put, put a te- yeah, okay, put a pit, put a hey. pit in that shit, Ruckus. Hey, good Ruckus. call. Make hey, sure you remind hey, us about that. That motherfucker's dead. I'm glad he's dead. Fuck his ass. Fuck him. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. We we at some point we gotta uh yeah we gotta double back on that. That's Crazy. Goddamn, Stu. Shit. Hey, man. He, he wasn't trying to help me out. Shit. On that note, what's up, hey. Stu? You got something to say on the way out? And, and, no. And, shit. And, and, and he is a white German. 
which I'm a white German too. So I'm thinking shit. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, he was, uh, nah, man. Uh, God damn it. Ruckus motherfucker. You got me. He, he said, <laughs> hammer said, damn students took a shit on his grave. <laughs> I would, if I could find it, I Holy would. Holy fuck, bro. Holy fuck. Hey, everybody, real quick, man. Here's Stu's YouTube channel right here, man. Make sure you guys go. Please, yeah, no, guys. please, please, please yeah. go on my YouTube. Um, I got some good as I got some good videos on there. Yes. Um, and like you said, we were talking earlier, right? Uh huh. About like, I didn't know Stu was making that many plays. Please just check it out, please, because facts are facts. Film doesn't lie. Facts. Talk that shit. And uh, if you can, here's all I want. I, I know everyone listening here are our fans, and but if you can find one play or one piece of footage where I wouldn't give it a hundred, I, I don't like the whole hundred and ten percent because that's not that's there is nothing beyond a hundred percent. Where I wasn't given a hundred percent for the silver and black, send it to me, and I will fucking, I'll blow you. That's that's how fucking that's how serious I am about this shit, and I don't play that like oh shit, bro. I'm telling you, find a play and send it because I guarantee you can't find one, man. Hey, you guys, shout out to the chat, man, real quick. Uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, follow our brother Stu on YouTube, follow him on Instagram as well. Is is it uh, Ty uh, Butcher? Uh, Die Butcher. Die nine. Butcher. Die Butcher Nine. Die Butcher Nine. Die Butcher Nine. Go follow our guy. I need, dude. I need to get fucking verified. I think I need a thousand followers, right, to get verified. Ah, you you should be able to do it now. I've tried twice. They denied me twice. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna talk to you about that because that, that that don't make any sense, bro. It, it shouldn't be a thousand. That should that shouldn't even matter. I'm too real, dog. That's the thing. I did just talk that real shit. My bad. I just said, what? you stupid, bro. You stupid. Hey, no, I love the shit. What's on Stu's cup? <laughs> a bunch of shit. <laughs> oh shit! He said, "Stop hopefully. doing that shit for real, man." Yeah, you're you're almost at one k, bro. I think you're at like nine hundred and something right now. I'm, I'm close. I know I'm super, super, super close. We're gonna we're gonna get you there, man. We're gonna get you there tonight. Fuck that. Um, Niza says, "I wanted to see your NFL films video." So you want you want look, bro? What we got? What, what, when we gonna show that, man? How do I show it though? Like I don't. Like, how do you go about showing that? Like, what should I do? Should I? But look, y'all, I promise you, next video, we're going to no, show No, we need to, no, we need to check out my high school highlight film first. I would like that, too. That'd be dope. Let's do it. You, you thought Michael Vick was doing this shit? Oh, I, oh bro, if you're going to talk like that, bro, I for sure got to see that shit. Oh, shit. Hey, you know this, though. Matt, hey, hold on. Michael Vick. That dude, flick of the wrist, 70 yards, just easy, easy. Bro, monster, bro. Man, that's 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 one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time for sure. Dude, no, but you know what, though? If you met him, <laughs> I remember this. It was, again, it was, it was one of the Super Bowls, and we're, me and my buddy were in the elevator, and all of a sudden, he, like, walked in the elevator, and we're like, is that Mike Vick? But yeah, that's a, that is Mike Vick. We're like. What's up, Vic? He goes, hey, what's up, guys? He goes, hey, keep it cool. <laughs> We're like, <laughs> keep, you it say cool? keep it cool? <laughs> keep it cool. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, bro? Like, <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Keep We're like, cool. That was Michael Vic, right? <laughs> he was like, yeah. Oh shit! Hey, hey, Kenneth said I already watched some of his high school videos and sub from the first time Stu came on. That's dope, brother. Um, oh, thank you. Hey, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Shout out to my brother. I, I do Jeff encourage. Kenneth. I do encourage to watch my uh, my Hall of Fame speech. It's twenty minutes. It'll give you a real overview of like where I come from, what I'm about, like just like me as. I mean, we talk on here, but like, yeah. like my family and like my whole up upbringing and shit. Yeah. 
Hey, real quick, let me get this last one. And shout out to my brother, Dustin, man. He slid in and threw the donation out there. How did it feel to have Tony Gonzalez's number in 2005 when you laid the wood to him, crossing the middle of the field and stopping him at the one-yard line? Salute graphic and Raider Nation for life, baby. Appreciate you, Dustin. How'd that feel, brother? So, so I always, for whatever reason, I, ha I had Gonzalez's number. For whatever reason, like – the, the 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 one yard line the fucking uh passes the fucking knockout shot like it felt great because yeah. he's i mean hey i i pay respect he's one of the best tight ends to ever play i mean All time. yeah for sure top three for sure bar none but yeah. he wasn't making the hall of fame on my ass nah i'm Talk. i'm not, I'm not I'm not part of his Hall of Fame fucking highlight film in fucking Canton. I know that much. <laughs> Fuck that. He ain't doing his dunking shit, like acting like he's fucking playing back at Cal basketball and shit. That so is funny, bro. I told you the year before he disrespected me, and I don't want to get in the whole story, but the next time I saw him was a knockout shot, and uh, the, his eyes peeled in the back of his head like this. I said, oh, shit. And you had Michael Huff going, He's, and, yeah. then, and then Kurt yeah. Morrison grabbed the ball and started running with that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, it, it, felt, it felt great because he, he's a, you're only as good as your competition, right? Oh, exactly. And to make plays against a guy like that, it only satisfies exactly. your, like, yo, if I'm making plays against this dude, like, I must have some type of game. Something's going on. Yeah. yeah. Something's yeah. going on. Like, so, I mean, honestly, respect to Tony, but I'll fuck your ass up, Tony. Dude, fuck your oh, ass, motherfucker. Shit. We, can't, we can't get that. Dude, they took the highlight off of YouTube. It's gone. You can't find that bitch. It's not on, It's not even on the fucking NFL films, bro. I'm going to find that. Fuck but that. I, I got it. Don't worry. I got it. Hey. We're gonna we're gonna do a fucking launch party on that bitch. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay. There, there we go. And we'll tag hey, we'll tag Tony in the fucking launch party. <laughs> Shout out to Sarah Phillips. She said, This is amazing. Appreciate you, love. Thank you so much. Um, we love doing these shows. You man. know what though? Hey, this was good. This was perfect. Yeah. For real. Because I know sometimes we get caught up and we're talking and people have actually serious because I don't wanna be like I told you, I want to Ed Reed's live feed. And like he didn't acknowledge anyone. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're first of all, you're not even entertaining at all. Like I'm paying respect to you as a as a football player, but at least you could do is just like, hey, yo, Stu, I see you. Like, yeah, that's it. yeah. Because I know you see it. There's only 20 people in here, yeah. not in here in his yeah. shit. Like, yeah, come on, but, man. But they're they're used to that, man. Like, see, what, what, that's why I love over here, man. I try to get as many people. Um, it, it, to together again. It's, look, this is what it's about. Be interactive with each other, man. Get get the questions in. You see what we do? We bring we bring, we bring people on the screen. That's what we do over here, man. We have fun, man. Look, it's all about them. At the end of the day, man. If you're in the chat, like that's all it's about. Out. That's all it's about. The yeah, family. we can't we can't do this without the chat. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's just gonna be me and you talking about a bunch of shit. Do you think the Raiders could be the Raiders without the fucking nation? No, hell no. Hell no, not at all, bro. And so why is it that dudes want to ignore the nation, though? I don't understand that. Like, dude, like, what the fuck are you... Do you not realize what fucking pays your fucking... For real. Like, who's buying the jerseys and who's 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 buying the NFL package and who's coming to the fucking games and who's paying for parking and who's buying alcohol to watch your sorry-ass fucking... All right, I'm, I'm about to get... Yeah. Shout out to Michael Edwards real quick. He said he really does interact with his followers. My wife be tripping like, did he just say your name? <laughs> yeah, that's what we do over here, bro. You know? Dude, no, honestly, dead ass. I would, like, when someone says my name, I'm like, yes. Like, cool. That Like, that's fucking cool, man. Like, yeah. for real. Like, I'm, I'm part of some uh, podcasts, and I send them donations. And I sent, like, a big-ass donation for, like, a shout-out. And they're like, yo, want to say what's up to Stu? Up and what? I'm like, they just said my name, man. I'm like, that's just fucking dope, man. Yes. So, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, 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 man, like, if you're supporting me, we got to support you. Like, at the end of the day, like, 
I see people, man, this is what's so crazy. I see shows all the time where people are donate and they still won't even uh, uh, like, like acknowledge any of the, any of them though. Like, like it's just, they just let them run down. But they're so down. boring though too. Yeah. It's like, dude, yeah. like I tried to, I did dude. I tried to watch a couple other ones. What's up bro? It was hard. It was hard. It was, it was, it was, it was hard to, to like, Man, I'm even like I'm even like trying, like I'm like, and like, dude, just there's nothing like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. So at the same time, if you meet an athlete and they act bougie like that, they don't need to act that way. I'm just telling you. And again, there's time to get back to people. There really is. Yeah, most definitely. And you know what? If you don't, if, if you're not that guy that's a social media guy, then get off social media. Because yeah. you have people that that think that they can get a hold of you on that shit, and you don't get back to them, and well, I don't have time. Then fucking get off of it, man. Well, guess what, Stu? Let me tell you something real quick. They're gonna acknowledge you now. You know why? Because we was just on undisputed today with Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless. Talk that. Shit, let's go. Hey, man, hey. we're going to make sure the world sees this second wind that Stu got, man. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Point blank, period. Let's get it, man. Let's get I it. I want to know what, what, what does wipe your feet mean? That means hit the thumbs up button. That means when you, you know, you wipe your feet when you walk in somebody's house. You walk your feet. You wipe your feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, was, I was wondering, I'm like. He always says wipe his feet, and that shit is tight, but I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. You know, when you walk into somebody's home, you wipe your feet, man. You hit that thumbs up, man. You just, you know, simple, simple yet effective. Shout take out to Hammer hey, House. Real take quick. your shoes off, homie. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Shout out to Hammer House one more time. We're public enemy number one. There's only one nation, the only nation. Hey, any more that. questions, though? Any more questions? Bro, you, you was walking off, bro. They stopped asking him because you was like, I'm out. So, all right, look, look, look. We got, he got his cleats on. Two more questions, because I'm about to go eat this fish again. Two questions. What type of fish? Food. Food, oh. brother. And if I'm lucky, food. <laughs> food, motherfucker. He said if I'm lucky. <laughs> All right, let me see, man. Let me see, let me see. <laughs> More like hey. filet mignon, man. You know what I'm talking about? Let me see. Doc, Stu, uh, love you guys, man. Love getting the true aspect of stories of the Raider Nation, man. I love it, my guys. Appreciate you, Steven. Appreciate you, my brother. Um, Doc, you crazy, bro. Stu, what city has the best food? I like that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I would probably say Baltimore. I with, knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, with like the crab cakes, that blue crab. Oof. Yeah, that shit hit different, bro. Yeah, I, I like the I like the crab meat on the on the uh, on the steak. Mm. Oof. Yes. I'd say Philadelphia. I, no, actually Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has some good ass food. Okay. Actually, you know what? Detroit, Greek town. Oh, Ooh. I love, bro. I love Greek town. That's my bro. every time I go to Detroit. I, I go to Greek town. Give me a yetta. I, give me a yetta with some fucking uh, some sour cream. Fucking how, oh, bro? Yeah. Hey, bro. I love I love the bars down there. Um, I love all that I shit. Mean, Detroit. That whole that whole area, bro. That shit's fire right. down there. Fire. Back. Shout out to you, Dustin. Man, have a good night, my brother. Um, let me see. What kind of music do you listen to, Stu? I know this, but I want to tell the nation. Oh, New Orleans has great food too. Yeah, New Orleans. See, I'm I, I I'm not into the fucking uh the the craw shit. The craw crawfish. Like, I'm not into that shit. Yeah, I like all seafood, bro. I know you do. You you a seafood eating ass. <laughs> but uh, here here you go. Actually, I'm. This is a per. God damn it! You see how I I lined some shit up because I was waiting for this question here. Hey, let's go. What you won't do? You don't, know, you don't know nothing about that, man. 
That's that Bobby Caldwell, baby. You don't know nothing about that, man. You're too young for that, man. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Caldwell, let's go. That shit is that shit is mean. <laughs> let me see. Wonder what. That shit. Hey, he said. He said. His, he said. He said. My friends wonder what is wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> You think I throw on that tower of power? Hey, they, <laughs> hey you know. Hey, hey, here you go. Hey, how about this though? Hold on. I watched Stu in Oakland versus KC and understand why you said Hall was difficult. He ran kick a big kickoffs back. He was a beast, dog. Hey, that dude was only this tall, bro. He he was like this. He was a micro machine. Yeah. Like you, Bro, every kickoff, it's like, dude, that dude could break every play. Like, that's the X factor, bro. When you get the ball and you're like, dude, this guy can break every time he gets the ball, like Michael Vick. Yeah. Dude, those are scary-ass motherfuckers, bro. Bill Gates, it was either Andy or um, M. Raider, man. Shout out to both of them. Those are both my little bros. They were both on the show yesterday. I appreciate you, man. I will make sure to let them know uh, what you said, brother. Shout out to Nizer one more time, man. He says, shout out to Stu for connecting with the nation. You know you're one of us for life now. How about that? Family. Shout out to my brother, Mike Nizer. Oh. Hey, that's one of them songs you put on when, you, when you're going through a binger. <laughs> just, just you a fifth in some rain. <laughs> hey. He be dude. I love his fucking no. Hold on. I love his drummer. Look at this mother. You gotta look at his drummer. Hold on. Yeah. Look at that motherfucker. Tell me he wouldn't have a good time. Look at this motherfucker right here. <laughs> Tell me that motherfucker was not doing his shit back then. Look at Bill Weathers, man. Look at that drummer though. She too cool. <laughs> He's got the zoot suit. He's got the fucking. He's got the triple breasted suit. That, that shit is fucking comedy, bro. <laughs> no, I, I listen, I listen to everything. I listen yeah. to everything. Let me see. I like All right, man. We're gonna get out of here, Stu. When we gonna do this again, man? What's that? When we gonna do we're we gonna get out of here, man. When we gonna do yeah. this again? Um the game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And I'll be I'll be live tomorrow for the game, man. Let me know if you just at the house kicking back. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow the game. Yeah, we play. Uh, we got the Rams tomorrow, second preseason game. So, um, I'll oh, be live. Matt next. Stafford. Yep. I know. Anybody? Anybody worry about that shit, bro? What time does the game start? I think. Uh, shit. Nine o'clock my time, I believe. So I think like ten your time or nine your time, somewhere around there. All right. Uh, real quick, Hustler Jones, did you watch the seven? Yes, I did, brother. Yes, I did. Uh, 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 it was with uh, Keyshawn. Yes, I seen that. I seen that, my brother. Thank you for the donation. Uh, Keyshawn, man, Keyshawn Johnson is something different, man. I, I, I rock with Keyshawn Johnson. Um, Keyshawn Johnson? How do, Keyshawn? How do I know that name? Keyshawn, a wide receiver, man. Played for Tampa Bay, played for the Jets. Oh, uh, yeah, Keyshawn Johnson from USC. Yes, yes, monster. Um, Michael Irvin. Oh, beast. I know, I, 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 know, I know your story about him. Hey, real quick, man. Shout out to the chat one more time, man. I appreciate you guys for pulling up. Always showing love. Shout out to you, Stu, once again, my brother. Enjoy that time alone, man. I know the whole family going. It's time to just relax, kick back. You know what I mean? There you go. Out the, the dogs, music, and some alcohol, man. You know? Be safe, my brother. And, and give me a call, man. Um, if, you, if you got anything on your mind, King. Love the Raider Nation, man. Always good. Hey, see you when I see you. Yes, sir. Love you, brother. Have a good sure. night. All right, man. Shout out to the nation, man. Love you guys, man. Y'all have a good night, man. For real, for real. I'm going to go eat this food, man.